and welcome back to the shop and we've had to actually move some shit out the way so we can use all the board because this is going to be a good one um so we've done a video before about looking at clamping loads and stresses and uh, not just clamping loads of torque and a lot of people have asked me how do manufacturers work out the torque of fittings uh, so let me just write this out and then alex oh fucking hell, i've already started off wrong looks like a bloody six before it started out, shite. So it's our equivalent stress, and then it is square rooted, and it is divided by, like so, it's 1 plus 3, and then it's 4d times, oh, I can't fucking remember now. Um, no, it's not 4D, that's where I've gone wrong, you twat. Ah, it's 4 times D2 over D2 plus D3. Is that right? Yeah. And that's times, our, and then we get to our helix. That's P over pi D2. And I think that's plus our head times our t and this is bracketed that is bracketed and that's all squared Whew! right so what the fuck's going on here this is basically the approximate calculation for working out let me get a different pen where's the green one done this is our approximate definition of how we work out what the fuck is going on with our fasteners. So equivalent stress is divided by basically the dimensions of our helix and the coefficient of frictions that are based on that. So um, our equivalent stress, what the fuck is equivalent stress? So an equivalence is when you've got two things and the ratio between them in a sense. So our bolt is um, trying to compress two things together it's trying to uh, apply a clamping load and with every reaction there's an opposite and equal reaction so if we clamp down with a ton of pressure there is going to be a ton of resistive pressure pushing back out this because our plates or whatever we're trying to bolt together um, because these are generally stiffer and can with you know their bolt modulus is a lot higher than the fittings doing it this stretches the bolt and this puts the bolt under tensile stresses so to that effect um we've got tensile stress up here and then we also have um torsional stresses shear stresses because we are actually rotating this entire system so we've also got tor torsional stress torsional torsional stress is there so this is our equivalent stress that's up there and we have to basically divide this, spread this out over basically our helix. So this is where all this comes in. So basically, these are the thread dimensions. Dimensions. Uh, this section here is our helix. And then we have this section here. Which is what I want to concentrate more on. So this is the coefficient of friction of our head. So there's the head of your bolt. And then we have our thread on it. So H is this section. The coefficient of friction here on our head. The coefficient of friction on T is our threads. So we have to know the friction between our threads and the head itself and you can look up these and they usually give you numbers i think h is for a standard fitting is 0.155 and for a head uh, for a thread it's one i think it's 161 depends depends on your coatings is it bzp is it um black oxide is it just clean steel just say if it's and it's different for stainless steel stuff like that but what you can see here is you have your stresses at the top and then basically we have 
the size, so all these Ds, these are all diameters. Minor diameter, major diameter, stuff like that. And that is to give you, basically this section here is to, our thread has a major diameter, which is the, the widest. So when you measure a thread, you get a thread and you measure it, um, that is the major diameter of your thread. And then obviously we've got our inner diameter and you have to add that in. But we also need to remove the centre because the centre of the bolt isn't rubbing against anything. It is only the, the thread surfaces. Then you've got your helix equation in here which is to do with your pitch and um, the pitch of the thread, the diameter and pi obviously because we're going around in a circle. So that's your helix sorted out. So you've got your helix, your, your overall dimensions. These are just your factors. So when you do your helix, there's a, a one plus P over pi, blah, 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 blah. And then you've got your um, coefficient of frictions. And these are all squared because they're all squared laws. And then you have to basically, to balance it all out, you fucking do the square root of that. So as you can see, it is ridiculously complicated because you need to know all of these numbers so if you want to go and work this out for yourself you have to do testing on your particular application if you're using aluminium what kind of aluminium is it the steel itself what kind of coefficient of friction is there so you have to do these coefficient of frictions um, and then there's the actual size of your thread and all the fudge factors that are in there and then the actual stresses that are applied to this which are the forces uh, tensile stress which is just basically an up and down it's a pulling and the torsional one is a bit harder to work out. But you can see that it's meh. So basically what they do is time after time after time after time, every time Suzuki or Kawasaki build a bike, they do not have to do this for every single bolt. They have a book. <laughs> and they basically just have for this, and this is why we have grades. Um, this is usually, you know, this is with, uh, and then you have to put your, your proof stress in here. So this could be 90%. 80% yada 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 for your tensile and torsional stresses. But generally your proof stress is your tensile stress. Whew. But what does this mean? You know, you can look at that all day and go, Matt, that went completely off my fucking head. Why? <laughs> yes, so when people say, how do they work it out? I was like, that's a difficult video, that's a complicated, that's not an easy video to do, or what have you, then you can see why because we'd have to go through fucking just, well, helixes to start with. But anyway, what does all this mean? Well, there's some little cool little things that we can see in here. You can see there that um, the coefficient of friction for your thread and your head were equally as important there. There wasn't one wasn't one tenth of the other or anything stupid like that. Um, Instead of just battering you with more bloody equations and shit like that and all the rest of it, which there is no point in, you can actually look at a graph, because I love graphs, and if you look at the torque sequence for a fastener, I've got this written down just because it's an actual graph from a reel. This is 80 newton meters, up to 80 newton meters. What does it say? Uh input torque so you basically have to apply so much torque to overcome the what's that say that says uh oh yeah that's a thread uh, that's the head and this is the thread and it's about two fifths as a relationship to each other so basically when you torque a bolt nearly all of the torque you're applying is divvied up between um, actually overcoming the friction between the threads and overcoming the friction of the head. This is final torque and obviously when you're winding it in it's just threads. Um, but I think what does it say? It's like under head is 30 newton meters and the thread itself is 50 newton meters, obviously because there's a, a greater surface area for the threads. And basically, if you apply 30 newton meters, it's not exactly this. It's more like 27.8 and 59.3 or something like that. Because obviously you are trying to clamp two things together, and that takes force. That takes um, 
well, it just takes force to do that, but it's generally about 5%. 5% of your actual talking, all that energy that you've just dumped into there, only 5% of it is actually used to squish that material together. The rest of it comes from overcoming the friction of your threads and your head of your bolt. This is why sticking, um, as, as we saw before, this is why sticking lubricants on your thread and on the bottom of your underside of your head makes such a wild difference. An absolute wild difference and this is why you don't fuck around unless they tell you to fuck around now there are a lot of rod bolts and stuff ARP fittings and stuff for a lot of V8s and all that shit they tell you to put and the torque specs are there um, they but they generally tell you oil your threads oil your heads because the numbers that we have worked out are based on the fact that you have to do that Every other fitting, if it doesn't spec that you have to use oil or lubricants or any kind of anti seize or anything shit like that, then don't fucking do it. <sighs> like I say, most of it, most of it, so if you, in a sense, it's like saying, if you do a, a, a bolt up to 100 newton meters, most of that, 95% of that, is friction. Right, so that brings us on to the next thing, which is uh, the numbers, the numbers that you see on bolts. So you might see something like 8.8 8 or 10.9. Uh, what do these numbers mean? So, because there's loads of units and it always helps, let's use the green. Our first number is our tensile strength, this one here. So that would be 800 megapascals. Or it's 800 newtons per millimeter squared, um, which uh, megapascals is pressure, and newtons per meter squared is pressure because that's force over an area. Uh, so that's what that first number is. So in this case, then that would be 10 or a thousand MPa. Like that, or ten thousand, uh, uh, not ten thousand, a thousand newtons per millimetre squared. All is gravy, all is fantastic. So, what's the other number for? The other number is your um, uh, proof stress. So, basically, this is the tensile stress. Sorry, I should put that. This is the tensile stress, strength, even, not stress. This and this. All job, uh, jobs are good and um, and then basically this is in a sense is a percentage of that it's a factor and we actually include the point this is why there is a point so this is what we call the multiplier so this is 0 0.8 let's make that nice and big that is 0 0.8 so basically what you do is you multiply this number by 0 0.8 um, same with the thousand I'll do the thousand because it's easier <laughs> so it's basically 0.9 of this thousand which would make that 900 you know it's it's basically so you can almost think as about a percentage this is 80 percent of that eight ten percent is 80 two eighty is a 160 so this would be 160 minus that which would be seven six forty six forty yeah so that'd be six forty mpa and this one will be 900 MPa, right? So basically that's the proof stress. In a sense, we never want to take it all the way to when it it tends, it tends fails in a tensile, you have a tensile failure. You don't want the bolt to go, uh, and it stretches. Because as soon as it stretches, that's plastic deformation. That means that the clamping load, it's basically reached that point where it's given. It's just it's give up the ghost. The bolt's got, it's been pulled and pulled and pulled because it's adding more and more clamping load. And then it goes, eh, it relaxes off. And then you, you might as well not have that bolt. It's not applying that clamping load. Um, so we want to stay away from that clamping load. So what we do is, is we write on the bolt exactly what that, yield stress that not yield it is yield um it's our proof stress we want to get close to the clamping you know this ultimate the not ultimate tensile stress just our yield point but we don't want to go really anywhere near it so this basically just gives you tells you that we can go 80 percent of this we can go 90 percent of this and that's why you get 10 uh, 12 nines and stuff like that but you won't find a 12 12 well 
yield to st uh, st stress to yield bolts. Nah, we'll talk about them. That's a bit of a different thing. But you, in a sense, that shows you what these numbers are. Sometimes they don't have numbers because they don't have enough room, so they put little marks like on your bolt. You'll have like a dash or two dashes or three dashes or whatever. Sometimes they can do that on nuts on the sides, stuff like that. Hope that makes sense. It is not an easy question uh, to answer, just like saying, ah, oh, just give it 15% of what you thought it was going to be. It's not as simple as that. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.